Today I'm speaking with Mr. Andrew Shankland, who is Vice President of Marketing, Customer Affairs at Airbus. Mr. Shankland, thank you so much for speaking with me today. What I'd like to talk with you about is NEO and, of course, the, the orbit of a thing which NEO works. Could you perhaps, for our viewers, give us a bit of an update on the NEO program? Sure. Thanks, Addison. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, it seems as if everybody wants to talk about the NEO at the moment. It's, uh, it's very, very topical indeed. So from, a, from an Airbus standpoint, what's actually happened is we made the decision to, to launch the NEO, which is the new engine option available on the A320 family. We, we launched it in the 1st of December last year. Uh, what that actually is, is a function of two improvement packages on the A320 family which will be available for entry to service from 2016. One is the Sharklets, which actually we're putting onto the A320 as an option from around late 2012. That's uh, 2.4 metre high large wingtip devices. Remembering we've already got wingtip fences on the A320, so it's putting up much larger ones. That gives you about a 3.5% fuel burn saving. Then we add on top of that the new engine option, that's why it's called NEO, available with one of two engines, one from Pratt Whitney, the other one from CFM, for entry into service in 2016. And when you, when you add those two things together, on a typical mission, which today is about 800 miles on the A320, that will provide about a 15% fuel burn saving versus A320 is delivering today. Just to put that into context for you about what that means is, it translates into, with current fuel prices around 250 a gallon, it translates into close to a million dollars of uh, saving in fuel cost per aircraft per year. So quite significant in terms of benefiting the bottom line for an airline. And also, of course, as we're saving fuel, there's an environmental benefit. So we save about 3,600 tonnes of CO2 emissions per aircraft per year. We also save in terms of NOx emissions. And lastly, uh, the aeroplane actually gets quieter. It's already a pretty quiet aeroplane, but because we're putting on engines with a bigger fan diameter, the side effect of that is we lower noise, and it means that versus the current regulations, stage four regulations, the A320 will be about 1515 EPM dB quieter than stage four. In other words, a very, very quiet aeroplane indeed. And of course, the market has responded with some uh, with some joy at uh, the arrival of Neo. Yes, we're, we're, I must say we're very happy so far. We're not too surprised because when we were, when we were in the process of launching the program, we we felt that the value proposition we were offering, which is basically let's give a let's give a proposal to an airline that has a pretty dramatic reduction in fuel burn, i.e., more than ten percent, fifteen percent in this case, but at the same time make as little changes as possible at the aircraft level because commonality uh, is really important to anyone that's flying a large number of A320 family aircraft today. They, they actually don't like change in terms of changing systems which requires them to buy more airframe spares or changing the aircraft which, re which requires them to, to retrain their crew. So pretty good saving, sort of maximum benefit, minimum cost from, from our standpoint. And what that's translated to in early days, of course, only about um, three months since launch, but we've got already over 300 uh, commitments. That's a firm order for 30 aeroplanes from Virgin, uh, commitments for 150 aircraft from Indigo in India, uh, 100 aircraft from ILFC, the large leasing company, and another 22 NEOs from, from TAM. So we're very, very happy with, the, with the, uh, the sales so far. When you speak to an airline and you discuss the proposition of NEO, what, do you th what seems to be the, the issue that gets their eyes to sparkle? Is it the fact that you can offer the savings, or is it the off offer the, f the, the proposition that this is going to require minimal change in terms of fleet, in other words, the commonality issue? So commonality yeah. versus fuel savings, yeah. Which, yeah. One, which one is the bigger? I, I would say the, the, the most important headline figure, the one that grabs the attention is the double digit fuel burn saving because the dollar savings ramp up pretty quickly as I, as I just intimated. But then the airline says, okay, well, what's the downside? So you're offering me something which is obviously different. Um, it has to be different, otherwise it wouldn't have any saving at all. So it's different. I see the saving. Yes, I can mathematically translate that into dollars. And and if they think that fuel price is going to continue to escalate, say, above the rate of inflation through time, it means the value proposition is greater. So then they say, well, well, what's the downside? What changes are you making to the aircraft? And what we're saying there is from an airframe standpoint, the airframe on the NEO 
will be at least 95% common with the current aircraft. And the reason for that is the only changes we're going to make are the ones that we have to make to accommodate the new and larger engines. Everything else will remain the same. So for example, that means that if there's a pilot who currently flies the A320, and if they're going to fly the NEO, all they have to do is do two hours of self-study laptop time at home. And that's a lot, lot cheaper for an airline than coming in with a new aircraft where they would have to, for example, take a full type rating of somewhere between 23 and 25 days. So the headline figure, the one that really forces the airline to take a very hard look at the aircraft, is the fuel burn saving and the environmental benefits as well, which are obviously becoming more important through time. Then they look at, wow, okay, commonality is pretty high with today's aircraft, that's a good thing. And the last thing, if you like, the icing on the cake is the additional productivity that the NEO provides because fundamentally if you're saving fuel you're saving weight and that means that you can either carry more payload about two tons in the case of an A320 or you can fly further about 500 nautical miles again in the case of the A320. So if one looks at the environment within which NEO is going to be operating that the, the competitive environment do you feel that you're going to be able to switch let's say 737-800 operators easily so the answer to that is, uh, in the longer term, it would be partly a function of what Boeing choose to do. So far, we've, been, we've made the decision first, if you will. So we're out there with the NEO, and of course we would be more than happy to sell the NEO to any uh, large airline, whether they be an A320 family operator or a 737 operator. It's true to say that if you look at the ones who can make the decision most quickly, they tend to be existing A320 family operators because of this minimum change concept. It's, it's not a difficult decision for them to make. In fact, really the only difficulty is deciding which engine to take between Pratt & Whitney and CFM. So those decisions can be made fairly quickly. Uh, that's why if you look at the airlines who have already picked the NEO, first of all, they already operate A320s. And secondly, which I think is very encouraging for the program, is in conjunction with the order for the NEO, they've also ordered more of the current aircraft as well, which is a very, very positive thing for us. Now, beyond that, of course, if we have a good value proposition versus our own A320, well, we have a very good value proposition versus the 737NG. But I would say that the evaluation timescales that those airlines will take to evaluate the NEO because it's a bigger change from them, changing the airframe would take, uh, would take a little bit longer. You made an interesting point in your presentation today that in terms of looking forward, 320neo has no sunset date. Correct. Which is an, am an amazing thing to say. Yep, yep. Well, if you, if you look at it, uh, what's going on there is we've, we've made the decision, we're very comfortable with it. What that means is we initially uh, built the A320 or the entry into service was 1988. The NEO will enter service in 2016. It's the same aircraft as the current aeroplane. We're just applying for certification because you can start to apply for certification five years before the entry into service. Right. And in actual fact, the aircraft that we are applying for certification for is an A320-200 series, just exactly the same series number as, as we have today. Now, if you look at the other competition uh, area, of, um, I guess it's more like 319 really, is the C-Series. Um, would you agree with the assertion that the arrival of C-Series was disruptive enough to, to push for NEO? Not really. Um, certainly, of course, it's our duty to look at all our competitors. It means we spend perhaps a lot more time looking at Boeing because uh, we compete with Boeing pretty much head-to-head -head in all campaigns. We compete a whole lot less with Bombardier, albeit the larger version of the Bombardier C-Series is about the same size as the, as the 319 and the 319 NEO. But the launch of the NEO was a business case decision. What that means is we looked at all of the scenarios where we re-engine, where we don't re-engine, where we do a new plane, where Boeing does a new plane, etc, etc. A bit of, bit of game theory really. Look at all of the scenarios with Boeing and, uh, and uh, Bombardier in Canada and also the aircraft coming out of China and Russia because they're about the same size. And we concluded from that that the best business case for Airbus was to be first to market with the re-engining product. And that's why we decided to go ahead with, uh, with the NEO late last year. All right, um, the, 
the other question that that really intrigues me is if you look at the the fact that the 757 is no longer around but that airplane has fabulous in its day fabulous numbers for an airline operator and uh, we did some analysis and we call it 321G. I don't know if you ever got to see a small paper we put out on it. And we always said that, our, our thoughts were at the time that if you were going to launch NEO, that the 321 would be the best place to start because mm -hmm. they would be an open, that it's open, there's no right. direct competitor. Yep. Thoughts yep. on that? Well, certainly I would, I would agree that uh, the, one of the potential target markets for the NEO, or the 321 NEO in this case, is certainly replacing 757s. Uh, although actually we think, and we have some sales to suggest this is true, that the sharkleted A321 is also a very, very viable 757 replacement. If you look at the 757, its strongest attribute is perhaps also its weakest element. And what I mean by that is it's a very high thrust machine. The, the thrust to weight ratio is very high. That means it has great takeoff performance, has a big wing, and it has very long range. So the higher weight variants certainly fly in excess of 4,000 miles. And that's why you can see today, for example, 757s flying the transatlantic missions. Now, if we went ahead and tried to design a 757 replacement as is, the good news is we'd have a more efficient aircraft than 757. But the bad news is we'd have a structure designed also to be able to fly four to four and a half thousand miles, which is not the key for the single aisle marketplace. The key for the single aisle marketplace is the 320, 737, 800 size. So what we're going to do with the NEO is the first aircraft to enter service will be the A320 because it's the middle of the market aeroplane. It's the one that, that actually the majority of sales are today followed by the 321 for exactly the reason that we think it's a very very viable and quite attractive 757 replacement there's about 650 757 still in passenger service today and then followed by the 319 to complete the family we don't plan at this stage to re-engine the a318 there's just not a demand to do so thank you so much thank you